Well, we get ready to play another, uh, you know, another good team. Um, and I'm sure you guys probably get tired of hearing me build up our schedule and talk about how good these teams are. Um, but it is a formula that we try to use in scheduling. This is the, I think it's the seventh team that we've played in a non-conference that's, that's picked in the top three of their league. Because um, we, we feel like if they have good years, then, then the, 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 the opportunity to beat them means more. The math is simply better. Um, you know, Furman's another one of those teams you just sort of stay away from. Why? Because, you know, they beat Villanova at Villanova last year. You know, they lost by five at Tennessee. Um, they're eight and two in their last ten road games. So they, with the two losses being um, uh, at South Florida Monday and at Alabama. Um, and uh, so they're a really good team. You know, why are they a good team? Because they really shoot the three ball. They've made ten or more threes on four occasions this season. Um, they also turn you over a lot. It's funny, they, they don't say to the foul line but 11 times a game, but they, 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 do, they have great hands. They, you, you put the ball down the floor and they strip and rip you, they reach and they grab and they dislodge the ball. Um, they're, uh, they've got 83 steals in the year. They, they're 11th in steals, and yet teams only shoot 11 free throws a game against them. It's really an interesting stat. Uh, they take charges, they sink, they rotate. So, you know, guys like Samir Doughty or, 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 or Javon McCormick or Isaac Okoro, especially Isaac, with as big and strong as, they'll be just jumping in front of him all night long trying to take charges. And um, So they do a lot of things that are, that are really good. That have got a point guard in Hunter that's got uh, a six assist to one turnover ratio. He's only turned the ball over five times in, in, on the season. Something like that. We kind of rely on turning people over. So we may not turn this team over. They turn you over a lot. They don't turn it over a lot. We, we kind of rely on people turning the ball over to make us better. So for, there's just a lot of reasons why it's a, it's a good matchup and a tough matchup for us. So. What, what have you seen out of, out of the team you guys, since you guys came back and, and had a chance to, I guess, work on things? And yeah. Things well, the guys after the legacy uh, in, in Tuesday night, um, Everybody kind of got a chance to go home. It's been the longest we've been off. We were off of Thanksgiving since I've been here, and it was it was really kind of wonderful. Um, obviously, Wednesday's a blur when you get in at three o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, but and then Thanksgiving, um, we had recruiting over the weekend plus the Iron Bowl, you know, which was one of the most amazing college football games I've ever seen. One of the most amazing football games I've ever seen, um, and so uh, it was a great weekend. Guys came back Sunday for practice. Now, a lot of our guys are here Saturday for the game. But we came back Sunday and practiced. Got the turkey out of us a little bit on Sunday. Practiced pretty hard Monday and Tuesday with contact. And here we are Wednesday, the day before the game. We'll taper it down. It's all been about Furman. It's all been about us. Um, and, you know, the key is can we continue to be the most excited team on the floor? Um, at what point are we going to start to believe the rankings, which I don't necessarily care about, nor nor necessarily hold much you know credence to. We're trying to become a a, a, a very good basketball team. I think we've become a good basketball team, uh, and we've improved a lot in the last couple of months. But you know, trust me, we've got a long way to go. Attitude's been good though. You've managed to play all thirteen scholarship players in at least one game so far this season. What, what does that sort of do for the players, the team spirit? I mean, I think that the chemistry is good. Um, I think we do need to get more contribution from the bench. Um, we've got a lot of experience coming off the bench. And, um, and for us to, to become a great team, those guys are going to have to get better in a hurry, particularly on the defensive end, knowing where they're supposed to be. And the only way to do that is through practice and through experiences and, and see if they've got the upside. I believe that they, they do, but that's, that's part of the process. So I think that's been, uh, that's been good. Again, the guys have... You know, for a team with five seniors and eight newcomers, I think they've done a pretty good job trying to get to know each other, kind of get to trust each other, and and uh, learn from each other. Javon, second in the league and assist turnover ratio and, and assist. Can you take it up, keep it another level? Today? I think that Javon is, you know, obviously a very unselfish player um, and a great athlete. Um, I love the fact that he tries to um, get his teammates involved. Um, 
there are times when he takes the ball down the lane where I'd actually rather see him shooting it um, than, than passing it sometimes because he can score. He can make a tough two. Plus, if he misses, we get good rebounding position. And so I don't think I would need to emphasize that he should try and have more assists than he does. Almost right now, I would almost be inclined to saying, I want you to score a little bit more. I want you to. I want him to uh, to, uh, to 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 hunt his three ball a little bit more. Um, but I recognize that the combination of his own personal unselfishness and the ability to play make for others is something he really enjoys, and we benefit from. I want him. I want him to impact the game more defensively, and I want to. I want him to impact the game even more with his ability to score. For the, for the whole team, are there any areas you? Looked at specifically as areas you wanted to improve during this break. Yeah, I mean, I think I think taking care of the ball and 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 having uh, uh, more purposeful possessions, and I think this team will again just by factor that where they are in steals and where they are in uh, in turnover margin. Um, you know, Alabama turned it over 24 times against these guys and won, but it, it is they turn you over. Uh, they, they ball watch. Uh, they they they've experienced. They help. They get great hands. They take, like I said, they take charges. If we kind of slop through some things on our execution, like every time Austin rolls down out of a ball screen, there'd be the, the lane's going to be clocked, and we've got to be able to make reads between getting it to, or they're, they're going to be jumping in front of him, getting it to him in places where he can, you know, he he can finish it at the rim, or then getting it to the guys in the perimeter without turning it over. So I would say that would be uh, very very important. Good and I think the young guys, def- I think the young guys more than defensively. I think the defensive aptitude, the defensive IQ, the stance, the the ability to make plays on the defensive end, it's always more difficult for younger players to do that. See, in football, you guys guys play offense, you guys play defense, and they sort of specialize. In basketball, you got to play both ways. Young players come in, and they're much better offensively than they are defensively, just by virtue of the complexity of the offenses that we go against and the schemes that we that we uh, that we utilize. Coach, playing in something like the Romans Classic. Just, what does that do for the team going forward? Um, I, I think what we've done is we've played we've played a number of good teams this year. We haven't played a great team yet, and so but we've played really good teams, and some of them been on the road. We've got we're seven and zero, and we played only three home games. So four of our games have been away from home. So we put ourselves in different environments, which I think uh, helps us be in position to be a team that can win away from the, the best home court advantage you know, in college basketball. So I think it's just about just growing and preparing. Uh, shockingly, there are still tickets available for Thursday night. Uh, this is the last game our students are going to be able to see our, our basketball team before, play before break. Uh, I know this as being the week before finals. Our guys are really swamped right now the week before finals with papers and, and pre- a preparation for exams, you know, finishing up a lot of projects. Our students on campus right now are working really hard to finish the semester strong, and I want to encourage them to do that. At the same time, I hope they take a study break on Thursday night and, uh, and, and, and uh, come in and see. A, a, a really good, fun basketball team to watch. I mean, Bob Ritchie's in his third season at, at Thermony. He's a very young coach, but he's very, very bright. And they do they do a great job. They're fun to watch. On your uh, your post game show from New York, you raised a few eyebrows when you talked about your plans that you were going to come back and uh, and plant some some pansies. I think. Have oh, you yeah. always had a green thumb? And are, is there any <laughs> analogy between that and uh, coaching basketball team? Well, I spent Wednesday and Thursday planting uh, my pansies, thanks to Young's Plant Farm and and uh, the guys at Lowe's and different places that I buy my plants. Uh, I had a strong pansy game going this year right now. Probably the strongest ever in my five years here at Auburn. Um, why pansies? Because uh, it's not because they grow through the winter. It's they survive the winter. So the or- only correlation would be as we get into December and January, the schedule gets tougher. Can we survive like my pansies? And uh, there's nothing pansy about a pansy now. They're a tough plant. So there's really they should have a much they should have a different name. Uh, because there's nothing pansy about a pansy. Eric, on that note, uh, you mentioned that honor roll. That that experience. How important is that for 
recruiting, university, everything when you, when you have a day like that? Well, listen. We saw two incredible football programs go head-to-head -head on Saturday. Two of the best football programs in the country in a game that matters more to everybody on the field and in the stands than any place in the country. And it seemed like on every series of downs they were carting guys off the field. And uh, those kids on both sides, on both sidelines, gave absolutely everything they had. And as a coach, I was uh, just tremendously impressed um, with the effort, um, you know, with the, with the sacrifice, and uh, obviously thrilled with the result. And, and, and uh, our football program has by far, and it's not even close, played the toughest schedule in all of college football. This historically may have been as tough a schedule in the regular season as has ever been played. I'd be curious what the numbers say. Um, and we've had some incredible wins in some very difficult places to play. Um, against some great football programs. And our guys deserve all the credit and accolades they deserve. Does it help our basketball program? Absolutely. The nation, <laughs> you know, watched the Iron Bowl all weekend long and saw, you know, Auburn once again, you know, dominated Jordan Hare. And uh, um, that helps our, it helps all of our sports. It helps our university. It just adds to the credibility of the excellence of our, of our sports programs and the university. I'm just so proud of our football program for, you know, for what they've accomplished. Um, let me mention one more thing now. Um, uh, Thursday night is Toys for Tots, and the Marines are going to be at the doors collecting. Um, I think last year we set a record for the number of toys that were collected at Auburn. Um, I had tweeted it out this morning, and I don't mind saying it again. Um, there will be children in this country that wake up on Christmas morning and not have a tree and not have any presents, and that's obviously very, very sad. But I think we could do something about it here in, in Auburn, Opelika, and Lee County in this area. So I think it's, it's almost like when I talk about the Outlive game, which we now know is going to be against the University of Kentucky in, I guess it's February, January, February, whenever the game is. It's, it's hard for me to believe that, that somebody could show up to the Outlive game without having bought an Outlive t-shirt. It just, you know, it's, it's $20, it's, it's every dollar raised goes to a cancer patient. It's a cool way of help supporting. So tomorrow night, I know my wife is out shopping now, and it's not for the kids. She's out shopping now for Toys for Tots to bring toys. And I just think if everybody brings one or brings something, you know, I want to set some ridiculous records tomorrow. Because, because in this community, every kid should have to wake, be able to wake up on Christmas morning with something special to open. And our fans could make a difference with that tomorrow. So I'm encouraging all of our fans to get out there and, and do their part. And I promise the Marines will, will deliver.